It can be difficult to define art, and it becomes increasingly more difficult when you try to define whether something is art or not. A few people suggested some books I could refer to that no doubt would have helped tremendously in laying out the history of art and why more radical movements in the art world were worthy of being called art. Not only did someone make a video rich in that information already, I decided I'd take a different approach and answer this complex question with as simple an answer as possible. So despite someone's skill, knowledge, or interest in video games, the following answer should make everything clearer. A video game is an interactive piece of entertainment that uses audio, text, and imagery to create an experience for the player. Any of these elements used in video games would be considered art on their own. 3D models or flat images that have been animated, a simple melody, or a strong piece of writing are independently art. These things can even be put together to make a new form of art. You can put together writing and still imagery to create a graphic novel, or take nearly all the elements you'd have from a video game to create a theatrical animated film. So this begs the question, if these things can be art on their own, or even when combined, why is it a question if video games can be art? There are two answers. The first one is one we might get from someone who believes video games cannot be art. And the second is the real answer for why someone may think they aren't art. What changes with video games that makes some people think it's an exception, where this is clearly good enough for any other kind of entertainment that uses these elements? So the flawed answer for why video games can't be art is because they're interactive. When you go to a museum, listen to a song, read a book, or watch a movie, none of the art changes in response to you. It's all experienced within. Gosh, what are you entitled? Clearly, this is why video games can't be art. Joking aside, it might be a decent answer with some elaboration, but it doesn't cut it because there has long since been art that is interactive. Ask any actor who might have done some live theater and you'll hear from them that even a passive audience influences their craft. Keeping in that vein and getting even more specific, there's performance art. No, I don't mean that performance art. I mean good performance art. The Couple in the Cage was a satirical piece performed by Guillermo Gomez Peña and Coco Fusco, done from 1992 to 1993. In this piece, they posed as two Amer Indians, or natives of a fictional Latin American country, who were displayed at various venues in a cage, surrounded by various media devices and icons of modern culture. The viewers could pay a few cents to take a picture with the natives, and the more money they gave them, Gomez, Peña, and Fusco would perform stories or sing in their native language. This was very much art, and the act of the audience paying a couple nickels to get more of Gomez, Peña, and Fusco's performance not only layered more meaning into the act, but made the audience a part of it, while still giving them a chance to reflect on the meaning of it. As a result of these performances, some regular patrons who were unaware it wasn't real later contacted the museum to cancel their membership out of the understandable outrage they felt over the idea of two people being caged and presented like animals. While controversial, this put the audience in an uncomfortable position to question what they were being shown and go through an experience, which after all is the purpose of art. Now imagine if the museum had closed the performance over these complaints. What would it say that they had to censor the art because it had offended those patrons? What would it have meant to the meaning of the art if Fusco and Gomez Peña changed the performance because someone misconstrued it as genuinely insensitive. It's censorship. If the artist cannot express themselves, they've put limits on expression and the potential to reflect upon the human condition. This isn't to say that all art does this, as there's no shortage of bad art in any medium, but this segues into the real answer for why it's a struggle for some to see video games as art. Video games are still a young medium compared to music, literature, and film. So it still has a bit of a way to go before it's more common to see good, strong examples of artful video games. Roger Ebert is a film critic who infamously made the remark that video games can never be art. He's more or less recanted on this statement. It's worth considering why someone like him, who is an art appreciator, would make such a strong negative statement. I believe the reason for why Mr. Ebert made this folly is the same for why so many American congressmen and women want to censor games. It's their age. Art outlives the artists, and sometimes even the audience. 
To truly better understand a piece of art, one has to be exposed enough to it to get the nuance, which is why museums exist for art that may not get as much exposure in the modern world. In short, they don't get it. As with any new medium of entertainment or fledgling art, those who are older will have more trouble understanding it unless they are the kind of person who passionately looks into learning and understanding something that seems non-essential to our everyday lives. Even I'm guilty of this, and it's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'll never be able to take dubstep seriously. Mr. Ebert admitted he knew very little about video games, and in doing so highlights why I don't like to try to handle topics I know very little about. No matter how logically constructed the argument or how sharp the speaker is, anything they say will still have little value if they're ignorant of the topic. The lawmakers, pundits, reporters, talking heads, and other authority figures that bombard us with messages that socially condition us are mystified by video games because the age gap and varied cultural values compared to that of their own youth. It's like when rock and roll grew to popularity in the 40s and 50s and was said to be the devil's music. By today's standards, Elvis's hip gyrations and the sexual innuendo in those old lyrics would be tame. Art is an expression of the artist, and indirectly, the ideas they've been socialized to agree or disagree with as they communicate with society by the way of the art viewer. You've set yourself to fail if you want to say whether something is art by the outlook of a single person's lifespan, which, unfortunately, can even be greater than the lifetime of the artist. Ask an archaeologist or an anthropologist if you want to know just how valuable the creation of art can be beyond one generation. So are video games art? Of course they are. If we strip away our personal beliefs and force ourselves to evaluate this very subjective concept by comparison to things we know are art, we develop a litmus test that allows us to quickly arrive at the conclusion that there seems to be little reason for games not to be considered art. Don't look at me to define what's good or bad art though. I mean, I could try, but that's all a matter of opinion and best left to the individual to decide.